الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبته في الله continue on in our study of the book the methodology of the Salaf al-Salih and the Ummah's need for it we reach the portion of the treaties and in fact this all of this is transcribed from a lecture uh, of Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, one of the senior scholars in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Imam said, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, now uh, in, the, in the title of it, in the portion of his lecture, the section of his lecture, a warning against forsaking the path of the Salaf. So here he is warning about the seriousness of leaving the minhaj of the Salaf as of departing from that minhaj, of deviating from the madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah. He said, now you find people forsaking the methodology of the Salaf. They present this in newspapers, magazines, and books. They belittle Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'a, the true Salafiyun. They belittle and disparage them. They accuse them of being extreme. They accuse them of declaring Muslims to be disbelievers, etc. Their claims will not harm, rather they will only harm the person who does not have patience and strong commitment. Their, their claims can possibly harm this individual. Here the Shaykh lets us know that individuals, uh, as our Shaykh used to always say in his durus, Ahl sunnah uh, tafawit. Or mutafawateen. Wa ahla bida mutafawateen. Which means that ahla sunnah, they have different levels. They're on different levels. Everyone's in a, in, a, in a different level with their iman, with the strength of their faith, with their uh, their azimah, their determination. Everyone's on a different level. And in different levels of adhering to the sunnah. As well as ahla bida is in different levels of their innovation. Some people have what you might say light bid'a light in the sense that they don't uh, their aqidah is generally straight but they fall into some practices of bid'a okay you have others that adhere to a sect and they have a deviant aqidah that their usul is completely deviant and you have others that have usul kufriya that they have uh, disbelief in their uh, uh, their aqidah that they are, they have bid'ah mukaffara, and bid'ah is of two types. In general, eh, when we're talking about uh, categories, categorizing ahl sunnah and ahl uh, or ahl uh, bid'ah, that there is bid'ah mukaffara wa bid'ah ghair mukaffara. Bid'ah mukaffara refers to bid'ah which takes you out of the fold of Islam. For example. Someone they say La ilaha illallah, Muhammad, Muhammad Rasulullah. They say the shahada, but they offer food uh, to the graves, and they make tawaf around the graves. This person is is doing bid'ah, and according depending upon their belief, this can either take them outside of the fold of Islam or this can just be a major bid'ah which is a major sin so one that according to their ittiqad can take them out of the fold of Islam likewise the person who supplicates to the grave so here they're supplicating to the dead they're supplicating to other than Allah so their shirk negates their tawheed their shirk, because it's the major shirk, it negates their Islam. Even though they say, Ishadu in la ilaha illallah. This is what many of the Muslims today do not understand. That there are things which take you out of the fold of Islam. And that it is dangerous. Getting back to the topic at hand. That many of the people so so we have to know that the people differ in their levels of adherence to the sunnah a talib al-ilm is not like the scholars 
and the and the scholars have different levels there are some major scholars major in their knowledge and in their understanding and their practice and there are some that are scholars because they have elm and fiqh but they might not be on the same level you can't compare them so we have to know that scholars have different levels and people have different levels so Ahl Sunnah, there may be some from the general Muslims that adhere to the Aqidah and Manhaj of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, but they have very little ilm. They don't uh, study, but they try to just practice their religion and come closer to their Lord and worship their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoid the bid'ah. Okay? They're on a different level than someone who is a, a strong student of knowledge or a student of knowledge. And that one is different different than the strong student of knowledge. And he is different than the scholars. And the scholars have different levels as we mentioned. And the Shaykh also mentioned that, which is in accordance with the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, so due to these different levels, the weak from amongst us can be harmed. And they can cause them to leave the minhaj of the salaf, to leave the madhab of the salaf. And it hurts us. And I can think of a, a classical example. Is someone who's a big da'i, I'll just say it, Yasir Qadi, for example. Yasir Qadi has studied in the Mudaris Salafiyya. This is where he took his knowledge predominantly from. His understanding of Islam was from scholars in Saudi Arabia and scholars that are well known for the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is where he, his madrasa and he studied and he memorized the Quran and he had these fada'il, these, these, these benefits. But look at his natija now. Look at where he's at now. How far he's come away because of his different environments his believing that he was academically challenging himself and that academically challenging himself destroyed him, destroyed his da'wah to khair, his da'wah to sunnah, and his practice of the sunnah, to where you see that he compromises all of those etiqad and he attacks uh, the aqidah and uh, the, the minhaj, the methodology of the salaf of this ummah and attacks the salafiyun declares that all kind of uh, arguments which are in accordance with a lot of non-Muslim academics. The point being a habit of Allah is that you'll find the people on different levels and the weak amongst us and sometimes it can even you can have all that knowledge or you can have benefited great amounts of knowledge but yet the way it, it's the heart. Because if the heart is not in accordance with that knowledge, or it allows the shubahat or shahwat to come in and take it, the desires or the doubtful issues to take in and shake up the heart, it can take you off the sabila salaf saleh, the minhaj of the salaf of this ummah. And this also comes from the hadith of the Messenger of Allah, and I'm sure the Shaykh is going to mention it. Uh, where the Prophet ﷺ said, "La tazal taifatum min ummati zahirin ala haq, hatta yatihum amr Allah wuhum ala thalik." Okay, ma qala Nabiu sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "There won't cease to be a group from my nation that is on the truth." Uh, and in another narration. Uh, un, un, until the until the sa is established, until the day of judgment is established, and in another narration, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, "La yudurhum man khalafum, wala man khadalhum hatta tukum sa," and no one will harm them who differs with them until the hour is established. So this lets us know that uh, that there will be harm when you adhere to the madhab of the salaf. And no one will harm them if they have their iman, if they keep their iman with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they keep on that straight path. They keep striving to be on that path. But once you open yourself up to bid'ah and let the vulner your vulnerabilities as a human being, any of us can go astray. And we hope and we pray that Allah blesses us to die in a state of strong iman and meet our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala based in practicing Islam how he subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. So it can happen to any of us. So it's a danger and a very serious thing that you adhere to those principles and kawaid to protect yourself from bid'ah and innovation and being harmed from those who try to harm you as a Sunni, 
as a person adhering to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in accordance with the Minhaj of the Salaf of this Ummah. The Shaykh then said, there are individuals who say, who are the Salaf? They claim that they are just a group like the other groups. They are merely a party like the other parties and they do not have any any distinction. This is what some people say about the Salaf. They claim that the Salaf are only another group and party like the rest of the groups and parties. These people actually intend to divert us from the methodology of the Salaf. Because they say that Salafis are just another Hizb or another Hizbi group like the other Hizbi groups. So they all have good, take the good and leave the evil. This is what some of the people, they have a eclectic minhaj where they take bits and pieces from this one, bits and pieces from this one, bits and pieces from this one, and put it together and make a new puzzle of a minhaj. And it's puzzling as a minhaj. Then the Sheikh said, there are others who say, we are not obliged to adhere to the understandings and the knowledge of the Salaf. We do not have to follow their way. Rather, we should make our own way. We should deduct new rulings. We should create new understandings. The way of the Salaf is old. Their understanding was for their time and is not befitting for our time as our time is diverse. For this reason, these individuals abandon the understanding of the Salaf and they propagate a new understanding. This affair is very prevalent in newspapers and magazines which are authored by the people of deviation. They want to divert us from the methodology of the Salaf. This is because if we do not know the methodology of the Salaf, we would abandon it and not study it. It is not sufficient that one ascribes to the Salaf without knowledge and without understanding their way. This is what the deviants want. They want you to forsake the way of the Salaf, their understanding and their knowledge, and instead invent new understandings that are befitting for the present time according to their claim. Uh, this uh, uh, statement is a lie. The Islamic legislation is applicable to every time and place until the Day of Judgment, the methodology of the Salaf <coughs> is appropriate for every time and place. It is light from Allah the Almighty and the High. So do not be deceived by the speech and deceiver and the deviant. Do not allow them to divert you. Very important, Ahabatifillah. There are so many benefits in the Imam's statement. And I just want to emphasize, look to those du'at in the West that are now saying, you know, for example, one of the particular individuals, he says, uh, you're looking back while we're looking forward. This is, I believe, uh, very. that's a paraphrase of the title of his lecture. Okay, it sounds nice. Because we do need to look to the future. And we do need fiqh with the understanding of the context of our times, the context of our societies. Our society here in America is not like Saudi Arabia. Even here in Seattle, Washington, or in the Washington state, it's not like Philadelphia. It's not like New York. There are differences. And there are differences in the way the communities operate. And it requires fiqh and hikmah on how to deal. Each situation is different. Each community is different. However, the aqid is the same. The minhaj is the same. The mu'amalat might have differences. It might require a different fatwa for this place compared to another place. But what is clearly intended from the speech of this particular individual in his lecture and outside of his lecture, because we have to look at the whole picture, the whole context of what he's saying. We don't just have to take a statement and take it out of context. But what he clearly is saying, because he says it in part of his lecture, and he says it in many of his other lectures, and his refutations of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, is that, you know, this sabil, this path of the Salaf, is not a minhaj which is sufficient and complete to be able to address contemporary issues. That you cannot just take and look into those texts and apply it in this contemporary time. So there's a belittlement of the madhab of the Salaf. Naam, we don't say that it's just like a computer. Sheikh al-Islam said this, this applies here. No. But at the same time, Ahl Sunnah says that we are looking at the Madhab of the Salaf. We're taking all of that. We're always referring back to that. And you and, and the, the, the people of Ijtihad, the ulama who have the ability to look at the contemporary context and what and how to apply the fiqh are using that as their basis. They're still going back to that. Even if they did not face those contemporary problems, but they're using that as their base source. Not just their own opinions, not just their own general 
uh, things that they feel Islam is and so forth. And that's a difference between the Salafis, Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, and the modernists, for example, and other contemporary secularist uh, people who adopt a secularist madhab, and other madhahib. Wa'iyadhan billah min dalal. So the Shaykh then mentioned after this, he said, do not allow them to divert you. So don't let them distract you. So this is an admonishment to the youth. Don't get distracted by this. Don't let these people divert you from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the sabil salaf salih Because the Sufis refer to the Quran and Hadith. The Takfiris refer to the Quran or sunnah. And they also refer to the, the ulama of the salaf, they refer to them. They actually, some of them extensively and in, in, in very in giving you fatawa. But they, the context of how they apply that, the contextualization of the time and the other conditions for these various rulings is where they go astray and they become extreme and they deduce from their own intellect that it's all about blood. وَعِيَّاذٌ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ ضَلَالٌ the Prophet, uh, Imam Malik, رضي الله تعالى عنه, said, لا يصلى آخر هذه الأمة إلا ما أصلحا أولها. Imam Malik said, may Allah have mercy upon him, that the latter part of this nation would not be corrected except with that which the early part of this nation was corrected with. That is a qa'idah min hajiyah. That is a principle, an, an Islamic principle, a minhaj principle. That is a difference, what difference, uh, differ, differentiates Ahlul Sunnah from other groups. Because we are saying, we are building our understanding, our madhab, our minhaj for understanding the Quran and the Sunnah by qa'id like this, like the qa'id uh, qa of Imam Malik. La yasla akhir hadhi al-umma illa ma aslaha awalaha. That the later part of this generation, so although some people are saying, hey, we're looking forward while you're looking back. Yeah, we're looking back. We're trying to look back to see what Imam Malik said. And Yabni, Nabni ala kawaid mafhum wa mashhoor. Laysa shay jadeed wa majhool. We're been, uh, building our qaida, our principles, on things which are known. And are known from the sabil of the salaf, those people uh, from, from the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in and after them. We're going back to what they say. Because Imam Malik said this, and this is in accordance with the book and the sunnah. This is referring us back to the salaf. He said, the latter part of this nation will not be corrected except with that which the early part of this nation was corrected with. So they focus on tawheed, we focus on tawheed. They focus on aqidah, we focus on aqidah. And of course we have to contextualize everything. Of course. Of course. But at the same time, that is our minhaj. How we, that's our tariqah, our path. Whereas others will say, well, that was then, this is now, and they will throw out those kawaii of the salaf. Totally. And start building new principles for understanding how to operate in the world. And often negating principles and the sharia. And Islam in general. Wa'iyadhan billah min dhalika. What corrected the early nation? Imam Fozan says, The Quran and the Sunnah and those who followed the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Adherence to the Quran and the Sunnah. This is what rectified the early part of this nation. And the latter part of it will not be rectified except with that what the earlier part was corrected with. Consequently, it is upon the person who wants salvation to learn the way of the Salaf, hold firmly to it, propagate it. This is the path of salvation. It is the Ark of Nuh, alayhi salatu salam. Whoever boards it will be saved. Whoever forsakes it will be drowned in deviation. SubhanAllah, it's a beautiful analogy Imam Fozan mentioned. Uh, whoever boards it will be saved. Th thus, there is no rescue except by the way of the methodology of the Salaf. And there is no way for us to know their methodology except by learning. We should study it and teach it, and at the same time, we should ask Allah, اِهْدِنَا الصُّرَاتُ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ صُرَاتَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرَ مَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِينَ 
Guide us to the straight path, the path of those whom you have blessed. This is the importance of Surah Al-Fatiha. It's a powerful dua. And it's we say it in all our, our prayers. Say it with sincerity so that Allah will guide you. Because ultimately, whatever we say, the, the hidayah is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't guide that whom you love. We love our families. We want guidance for them. We want guidance for ourselves. So we have to strive. But sometimes people, their hearts are hard and they don't hear. Sometimes people are bored. They don't listen. Sometimes people, how many times do we speak about things and then people ask something about it and you spend an hour talking about it. Then they, it's as if they, they weren't there or they didn't listen or whatever the case may be. Cool. The guidance, the hidayah is from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Whoever Allah, whoever Allah guides is guided. Whoever Allah leaves to go astray, no one can guide them. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and guide us to the Surat al Mustaqim, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala Nabiya Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.